what's up? Welcome to the video. I hope you're doing well. I absolutely hope you're doing swell wherever you are in the world. In this one, we're going to be making this. And we're going to be making this just using two images and using some simple masking. Now, if you don't know what masking is, I'm going to quickly explain it. It seems kind of weird, but it's actually super simple. It's super powerful. So let's jump right in. Uh, what I like to do is always reset my studio back to default in case you want to follow along and you want your screen to look like mine. So to do that, you go up to Window, Studio, and select Reset Studio. Okay, so let's talk about masking super fast before we do this. I got this, these three images here. I have a background, a cup, and this ball. Now let's just say I wanted to take this cup and I wanted it to look like this ball was sitting inside the cup, right? I could take an eraser and erase it, but that would be destructive. So if I made a mistake or if I wanted to come back later, I could never change it. The reason masking is super important is because you can remove things or re-add them a thousand times. It's non-destructive. It'll never affect your work. Uh, and that's why it's so powerful. So let's say I wanted to make it look like this ball was in this cup. What I could do is go up to the ball, click here in the layers panel. I could go down to my masking button, which is right here, and click on it. Now, when I do that, nothing happens. But you see this mask is attached now to this ball in the layers panel. Now, the way masking works is I can paint in white to bring something back, reveal something, or I can paint something in black to hide it. So I want to hide part of this ball to make it look like it's in the cup. So with this mask selected, I'm going to go over to my brush. You can hit B on your keyboard, or you can click on your brush icon right here. I'm going to click on that. And then now if I look in the top right corner, I'll have a color tab here. Now, because the mask is white, if I paint in white, nothing's going to happen with my brush. But if I move this slider over to black and I start to paint, it's going to start hiding this ball. So say I went like this. I took the ball and I painted this much away. And, I, and then I realized, oh, you know what? I took too much of the ball away. Let me zoom in. I need to bring some of the ball back to make it look more real, realistic. With the mask selected, all I have to do is flip back to white. And then I can start painting the ball back in. So originally I had the ball, I painted some of it away, and now I'm painting it some of it back in to make it look more realistic. So say again, say I went a little too far, I go back to black, and then I can start hiding a portion of it again. Okay, so that's honestly the, the basics of masking, taking things away or hiding them. Now there's something else you can do. Let me delete this mask. There's something called an empty mask, which we're, we're going to use in this. Now it's the exact same thing. The only difference is we hide the image first, and then we paint it back in. So I got the ball selected. This time I'm going to go down to my masking button here. Instead of clicking on it, before I do, on my Mac, I'm going to hit Option. On your PC, you're going to hit Alt. And I'm going to hold uh, Option, click. And I have this option now that says Empty Mask. And when I do that, I'm going to click on it. You're going to see the ball disappears. There's a mask attached, but this time it's black. It's not white. All that means is it's black, it's hiding. All you have to do is take your paintbrush, use white, and paint me back in. So now if I go to my paintbrush and I start to paint, you see I have black selected in the top corner, so it's not going to paint anything back in. But as soon as I slide over to white and I start painting, you're going to see it brings the ball back. So there's no wrong answer. It's just what you want to use it for. Sometimes it's easier to paint it all back in. Sometimes it's easier to keep the whole picture and just bring a little bit back. So that's the idea of masking. Basically, hide things or bring them back non-destructively. Now, let's get into this shark image. So to start, I have this uh, picture of someone holding a phone, and I have the picture of the shark here. So first thing I want to do is expand this background image out to fit the canvas. So I'm just going to click and drag out the handles on the side to make it all the way. And I want to put the shark over top of the phone. Now, I want it to look like it's coming out of the phone. Now, I can't see the phone behind me. So what I'm going to do is with the shark selected in the layers panel, I'm going to go to my opacity, which just means transparency. I'm going to click and I'm going to drag it down so I can see the phone behind me. And I'm going to position the shark how I think it would look good. I think maybe something like this would work just fine. And I'll bring that back up to 100%. Now, I can do this two different ways with masks. I can either put a regular mask on and paint away all the water to try and keep the shark or I can hide the shark and just paint him back in. It depends on what you're working on. In this example, I only want the shark and a bit of water, so I'm going to hide it and bring it back using an empty mask. So with the shark selected, I'm going to go down to the mask button here, and on my Mac, I'm going to hit Option Click. On a PC, you're going to hit Alt Click, and I'm going to select Empty Mask. And when I do that, you're going to see the shark disappears, and I have a black mask attached to it in the Layers panel, which means it's hidden, so I can paint in white to bring it back. So with the mask selected, I'm going to go over to my paintbrush or hit B on my keyboard. And if I painted, you see that's black, right, the mask? So if I started to paint in black, nothing would happen. I have to paint in white to bring it back. So now I have it uh, selected. Now if I start painting, you can see 
that the shark is coming back into the picture. Now, anything, because this is a mask, if I go too far or I paint too much, I can always bring it back, right? So let me just paint this part portion back in and then we can go through the details. I'll just do a quick uh, draft, a quick rough version so you guys can see it and then you can work on whatever you want yourself. So I'm just painting around the shark here, bringing them back in. And already pretty quickly, you can see that it looks pretty decent with not much editing. And you can see here where the finger is. I've gone too far. So if I just went back to black, I could hide it and I can bring the finger back. So uh, I also want to mention to your brush settings affect how your uh, mask looks. So right now I have at the top left, I have my opacity, so my transparency and my flow up to 100%, which means it's going to show more. It's going to be a little bit more rigid. And um, I can change that to bring it back. Uh, to, to, to edit how I want to look. Now I want some of this, some of this water over the side to make it look realistic, but I don't want too much. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull my opacity down a little bit, which means it's not going to be as strong. And I'm going to bring my brush, make it a little bit smaller. If you don't know how to make your brush bigger or smaller, you can use your bracket keys. Your left bracket key makes it smaller and your right bracket key makes it bigger. So I'm going to kind of paint around these edges and I want to keep the shape of the phone. I don't want to do too much. So you don't really know it's a phone, but I want some of it also spilling over so you can see that it's a, uh, there's water spilling over. It looks natural. Now he has a fin here. I'm going to try and paint this fin back in. I'm not sure how it's going to look, but let's just paint it in for now. And down here, I want to paint some of this water in to make it look like it's spilling over the edge a little bit. So it looks a little bit more realistic, but not too much. So let's paint all this back in. Let's do some more water over here. Nothing too crazy. And then we'll go around the shark. I think that water actually looks pretty decent. Uh, I'll remove a little bit of it by painting in black. And I'll just remove just a bit of it. Nothing, not too much, because I do want some of it there, because I think it looks good. Gives it a bit of a pop. And let's remove this a little bit, maybe. No, that's too much. Let's go back. Okay, so you can see here pretty quickly, I'll paint in here. We've made this look pretty good uh, just by doing some basic uh, masking. And let me bring this up here and see if there's any water that can spill over here to make it look a little bit better. Let's do something like that for now. This could be better. Uh, I think I'm going to go back to black and erase that. And I'll, the, the final version is the thumbnail, so I'm not going to spend time totally cleaning up, but just giving you guys an idea what you can do here using masking. And what I'm going to do as well, let's clean up over here. Actually, this is a little bit too much. I don't know if I would include the fin actually next time I do this or if I were to do it again, but this is just a quick rough draft. So cool. Let's, that's a quick version, right? So we got something like this. Now, what I want to do to add some other effects is I want to add something kind of behind the phone, like some other sort of texture or explosion. So it looks a little bit different. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the background. And as you remember, the shark is here. It's just a hand and a phone. I want to isolate this hand and phone. I want to duplicate it. So there's two of them. So I can put one that I can put an effect that looks like it's coming from behind the hand. So with the background selected, I'm going to go over to my object selection tool. I'm going to click on that. And then you can see what it's selecting. It's like, oh, do you want the phone? Do you want the hand? I want the phone and I want the hand. So I'm going to take both. From here, I'm going to go refine. And then what, what's showing in red is going to be hidden. What's going to be shown in uh, the forefront is what it's going to take. And this is fine with me. It doesn't need to be perfect. So let's go to selection and select a new layer because I want this on its own layer. And when I do this, you're going to see kind of just the hand because I've hidden the shark. And I've hidden the original background. But once we bring the other hand back, you can't tell what it looks like. It just looks like the main picture. But there's actually two hands and two phones there. So now that gives me the ability to put something behind the, uh, on top of the first phone to make it look like an effect. So we can put the shark back, take them off. So what I'm going to do with my background selected, I'm going to go down to my add pixel layer right here. And now I'm going to paint something behind this to make it. I'll show you what I mean. So I'm going to take my brush again. And this time I'm going to change my brushes. I'm going to go to a little plug here. If you're looking for awesome brushes, go to bydesignmethod.com for brushes for Affinity Photo and Affinity Designer. So I'm going to use my cinematic magic brushes. And I'm just going to select one of these uh, maybe fog clouds. I'm not sure. Um, now maybe I'll use my powder brushes, powder brush. And I'm going to paint in like a lighter color, like a white-ish. I'm going to go behind the phone here and do something like this as an effect. And let's put the shark back on to see what it looks like. So we got something like that, which looks pretty cool. And I'm just going to do uh, something else. Let's do this defocus light, something like this maybe, because it kind of looks underwater-ish. We'll add that there. 
And then one more thing I will do, I'm gonna go back to my layers. I'm gonna add one more pixel layer. So I'm gonna click on here. I'm gonna add a new pixel layer. Go back to my brushes. And this time I'm gonna change my brushes to another one of mine, uh, which I really like using for details. Uh, where is it? It is called Shady Details by Design Method. And these are for like sh a fine shading and little things. So I'm gonna take this and this has these kind of these dots, uh, which I kind of like. Now it's a big circle, so I might expand this out or I might make it smaller. So you can just kind of see some of these little effects here. Let's see if I got a bigger one here. That's not what I want. That's pretty cool. That's a bit too much. Let's go back to the original ones here. And I just want these little like dots here where it doesn't look so. And if I made it bigger, I'll show you what I mean. If I did this, just say, right? Now you can see there's this perfect circle around it and I don't love that. So what I can do is I can put a mask on this too. So I'm gonna go back to my pixel layer. I'm gonna put a mask on it. And because this is a regular mask, if I start painting in black, it's gonna start hiding it. So if I start painting over here and I'm using my, the same brush so it, the, that I'm using. So it's kind of taking it away the same way I put it in. So if you look closely, here, let me zoom in here. It's taking it away, the specs, the same way I put the specs in, because that's the brush I'm using. However you mask, it's going to look the same way with the brush that you use. Let's just pull some of these away so it doesn't look so round and crazy. I'm just holding my mouse and clicking and dragging around. There we go. That looks a little bit better. There we go. So uh, there you have it. This is our shark image right here. It was done really quickly. Uh, obviously, you could clean it up and make it a lot better. But that is the power of masking using a regular mask versus, in, versus <laughs> an empty mask. Uh, thank you so much for watching. And if you uh, have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. Be sure to tap, tap, tap that like button. And I'll see you in the next one.